All right, what is up, YouTube? So it has been a very long time since I've done a video. Um, a lot of things have happened. Some very unfortunate things. I know that engine looks really shiny and stuff right now because they spent many hours cleaning it. So um, I'm really bad at getting back to certain comments on YouTube because uh, I've just been so busy with uh, other ventures in life and whatnot. Uh, I, there was a comment on where I got my... Uh, bottle for my welder at I got my bottle from air gas it's a uh, 60 uh, 60 size bottle cubic foot um, I'm trying to think if there was any uh, the 351 Cleveland I far as I know it's in the small block family uh, it's not too different from the Windsor just a different deck height and uh, width I believe like I said there's more experts out there on that stuff so back to the unfortunate thing that happened to this so <clears throat> if you come over here you can see there's a uh, scorch marks on the hood and uh, the wiper motors burn up um, there's a bunch of burnt spark plug wires uh, the carburetor is pretty blackened so uh, my original video was to go over the seats on this car and unfortunately I was waiting forever for those seats to come <clears throat> excuse the camera um, and uh, like I said life just got away from me been super busy so we had an engine fire uh, we don't exactly know exactly what happened but the fuel line blew off uh, I've driven this car 16,000 miles with the same fuel setup so uh, it came off there and you can kind of see here is the good and crispy uh, paper filter um, thankfully it happened legitimately as I was coasting into the fire company parking lot so uh, and thankfully someone was there so we were able to get it out it did melt some of the main Coating on the wiring harness, I took out some of the already burnt wires, but the main harness is actually okay. And uh, it did some damage, but it could have been much worse. So, I mean, the motor actually looks much better now, but we spent hours cleaning it. So, ordered a 650 CFM Holly Double bumper carburetor for it, uh, an electronic distributor. Uh, wires comes with that kit. I gotta rewire some things. The obviously the wires to the distributor are, are uh, pretty toasty. The oil sending unit's toasty. You can see the wire there is uh, it goes to the points. is pretty toasty. Um, my oil pressure line that went to my oil pressure gauge is shot. So you know some odds and ends, but um, we're gonna change some things. I ordered a. Uh, because it's a double pumper, it has two fuel lines going to it, so they're metal with a pressure gauge. Because a couple things might have happened. Unfortunate luck, I will not use these clamps ever again. I will actually use the ones you tighten down. Uh, there's a spring, I believe, in the fuel pump that can stick sometimes and uh, shoot your pressures through the roof. I don't know if the float sticking would have caused it. I don't know, but I'm going to run metal line uh, to prevent this from happening so I also ordered a new wiper motor which is unfortunate because that one was fairly new that I put on uh, when I first got the car so uh, my plans was to eventually take this car off the road permanently in three to four years uh, like I said I have some other ventures going on and there's a house in the works and uh, I'll get to the other surprise at the end of the video but uh the plan was to redo this whole car and put the 351 Cleveland in it, five-speed manual transmission, so on and so forth. So, <clears throat> because of the heat, you can see how the paint started bubbling, and the hood wasn't in that great a condition to begin with, so we're basically just going to flat black it for the time being, because like I said, I still want to drive it for a couple years until I decide to, you know, 
eventually restore this whole thing. So that's the unfortunate news. Uh, but as you can see in here, the interior is completely done. The seats, the seat brackets finally came. Car's got some paperwork in it, but uh, I mean, all in all, it's a little dark in here, but for all the work I put in, thank God the fire did not reach the uh, inside of the car. I never did the door panels yet. That was going to be a this winter project. So, all in all, I'm very happy with the car. Unfortunately, this situation happened. So, um, that's the update on the Mustang. I might do an update video. I mean, carburetors are pretty simple. Distributors are pretty simple. Uh, we've been working on this. It's my cousin's four-wheeler. And uh, I was doing some rust repair on another vehicle. So, ironically, I wanted to step away from doing mechanics for a little bit. Kind of fall back, enjoy life. Enjoy this thing. Um, but, you know, life had other plans. So I will uh, be doing a video with this. Uh, we'll also be doing a video on a, a Badland winch install. And I have to do a water pump on my uh, boat if you follow the boat videos as well. So the surprise in all this was uh, one, of the, uh, one of the many ventures I've uh, ventured on with my girlfriend is uh, we ordered a four wheeler. So I have a 2022 Honda Rubicon 520 coming that that winch is gonna get installed in on. And uh, my girl has a 2022 Honda Rancher 420 with IRS coming as well. So I was gonna do a review on both those machines. Uh, winch install, that was kind of what I wanted to take a break uh, for from mechanics, not like permanently, because I do love working on cars, but for the people who have like steadfast followed this channel, I've done a lot of stuff um, in the last year and a few months. Between, you know, gutting the car, redoing all the floors, the interior, I rebuilt the top of the motor. Uh, I don't think I have too many videos on that. I tore down the 351 Cleveland. I restored that uh, Cub Cadet 100 from the ground up. I rebuilt the motor on my boat. Um, just. A lot of projects and uh, I kind of just wanted to enjoy life a little bit so we uh, we're going to get four wheelers and kind of go do that so but like I said unfortunately she caught fire but uh, you know it could have been much much worse so I'm very pleased with uh, the seats in the Mustang and how that turned out I'm gonna get the name wrong they're uh, Kabor Coboro, C-O-R-B-E-A-U, uh, whatever the pronunciation is for that. Um, very happy with those seats. It's much comfortable. Uh, for those who followed the channel, I put QA1 front adjustable shocks, inch and an eighth sway bar up front, added a three-quarter sway bar in the back, one inch lowering leaf springs, subframe connectors. We did new floors, headliner, carpet, center console, redid the dash, reupholstered the rear seats, which unfortunately, like I said, it's a little dark in there, but you can see them. They were originally the ugly green cloth seats, which you see right here. Uh, the, rears, the rear was the same. So, uh, yeah. So that was just an update on what happened. I also have those. Neutronics halo lights up front, which I love as well. So, um, it's just a little odd, a little odds and ends. I got all those vacuum lines in the back are shot and you know, stuff like that. But we'll get her back together. I put the order in, so shipping's still a mess sometimes with CJ Pony parts. So, we'll see how long that takes. Uh, I might do a video on this Honda 250EX. We're resurrecting it from the dead. It sat for a while. That's a fuel tank. It's really disgusting. So we're going to get new carbs, battery, clean the fuel tank out, flush that out, um, change the fluids. I, if I didn't say new battery, new battery, and uh, see if these tires will hold air. And uh, 
see if we can bring that back to life so he can come riding with us as well so i may do a video on that i'll do an update video on the mustang uh there'll be a video on installing a bad Edge 3500 winch on the rubicon i got to do a water pump on my boat had another unfortunate accident i had a tree limb fall on the window of my boat and the glass is curved because it's like a sportier windshield so we're going to try to epoxy that because it's really hard to find a company that'll uh, form that glass for that where i live so um and then flat black the hood so these unfortunate things happen from time to time like i said thankfully it happened at the fire company most of the car was salvageable um, i do have new weather stripping for the cow up there that I ironically never put on so um it'll probably be down for till August sometime but uh I will do a better job of getting back to comments like I said life has been really busy with everything going on uh but I did like I said I did have a question uh for my titanium welder from Harbor Freight uh that I get my bottles at air gas and then I get them refilled. I believe you can only get an 80 cubic foot. Right? You can actually buy anything larger than that, at least in Pennsylvania, you need to rent. So if you like one 120 cubic foot, I also has that small reserve bottle there. That's a 20. Uh, so the 60 lasts a pretty long time. Like I said, I did all the floors, the subframe connectors, a couple patches, the exhaust, I think on a bottle and a half. And I just did, uh, uh, we did pinch wells, inner, outer rocker panels uh, on a Toyota for, uh, and I went through like a half a bottle doing that. So the 60, 60 does a good job. Uh, the, I had a question about, like I said, 351 Cleveland that uh i believe is from the small black family it's back there under everything um i think they're very close to the 302s like i said the bore is obviously different i'm sure i don't know if the crank's different i'm gonna guess the crank's different uh but i know like the deck height of it is different i'm sure the width is slightly different but it's probably very close but i'm pretty sure it's part of the small black family there's a bunch of comments on that 351 Cleveland video from people who know a bunch more about it than I do so um, that's where we're at with that I'm just happy that we were able to salvage a car because I've literally turned every bolt welded everything into this car did everything myself uh, I also lost a passenger side mirror uh, it was cracked for the longest time and I was pushing it in some turns and it uh was laying on my workbench back there so the plan is to uh get a new mirror i want to fix this rust up here over the winter like i said i'm going to redo the car uh later in its life but uh, that's a mirror that fell off there so um i'll do a better job of getting back to questions like i said between this uh my girl started a new business so i've been helping her with that uh i started a new job so and then the four-wheeler coming and stuff like that so it's just been busy so i've been slacking on youtube videos i guess um i guess the most important thing in this is i've learned a lesson that i think i'll just use steel lines from now on and uh not use these pressure clamps it came with the car i never changed them because that was what's on the car but if you get the ones that have the flathead in it or I forget what size socket you can put on it I would uh, strongly suggest using them from now on so that's the update on it I'm surprised I was able to save these valve covers and whatnot because they were pretty blackened and actually the air cleaner I was able to clean up but I got to separate the air filter from it because it melted into it so I have some artisans that chrome strip there has got to go on the bottom of it and the, all the door panel stuff's over there yet so i was going to do that this winter i just wanted a little bit of a break from wrenching so again thank you for everyone who's been watching these videos um 
I hope they help you a little bit. Uh, just unfortunate accidents happen sometimes. I'm not an expert on some things, but I do know enough. Uh, I don't know if it could have been prevented. It's just one of those things that just randomly happened. Don't even know what set the fire off. I don't know if it was a header because it just started it to go to work or if it was the uh, points in the distributor cap just had enough of that spark to ignite it. I don't know. But thankfully we were able to get it out. Uh, it did not hurt the main wiring harness. If it did, I was probably just going to permanently take it off the road. Because my long-term goal is to do a... Uh, for people that have restored cars, or if you're new to restoring cars, they do make wiring harnesses from painless performance. This still has the glass fuses in it. Painless performance updates all your wiring. Everything's labeled. It comes with your modern fuses. It comes with accessory fuses, so if you want to add stuff, you can just tie into the fuse block. It's, it's pretty nice. But uh, I, I really didn't want to have to rip the car all apart again because I literally just had the interior part. Um, some of you may ask, why didn't you just do the car all at once? Uh, like I said, we're eventually going to be buying a house, so I can't really restore a car. I don't make millions a year. And I was did not like the seats, obviously, over there. They had no support to them. I did not like the way it rode. Her and I like taking long trips in it, so I wanted better suspension, more comfortable seats. Uh, that center console was an add-on because this thing had no cup holders, so we added that center console in and, you know, stuff like that. So I just wanted this car for another couple of years to drive around because I do love driving it. But the long-term goal is to eventually take it off the road, and I'm going to do all the body work myself, painting it myself, and all of that. And that's going to be a couple of years of work. But, uh, you know, I love this car for anyone who wrenches on cars. I mean, you put so much time and effort into something. You, you, you put your heart into it. I mean, I can't even tell you how many hours I have on this. And some of them are frustrating hours because for you guys who've been watching me, like I never did floor pans. I never welded before. Still don't claim to be a professional welder by any stretch of the imagination. I think I did a pretty good job. Learned some mistakes along the way. If you're gonna do a headliner, you know, it was a uh, a chance I took. I did not pop out the rear window. I should have popped out the rear window because the back sags a little bit. I had to use tape, like I said. I'm not one to hide mistakes. That way, if you ever are doing a headliner and you're a beginner, you pop the rear window out. And if you don't know how to pop it, hire someone to pop it out and put it back in. But that way, the headliner stays really good. Um, my other opinion is if you go aftermarket seats, and then like I said, I don't know how many people watch the videos all the way through, but I kind of go all over the place. If you get aftermarket seats, at least with these, I'm going to assume... Probably all the same. You get aftermarket seat brackets too. These seats sit up higher than the uh, stock seat. So I'm a, I'm 5'11", and my head almost touches a headliner. When you do a headliner, I don't know what they're called. They're rods that go through, and it's basically like if you ever set up a tent before, they go through the cloth, and it lifts it up and all that stuff. There's two different portholes in there. Basically what that does is it adjusts you know, how high your headliner sits. I should have went up into the upper porthole. That way I had some more head space. You know, I wasn't thinking when I ordered the seats that they would sit slightly higher. So, you know, my mistake. But when I redo the car again, I'm going to fix the headliner the right way because I do want to replace the glass in here, the front windshield, because it's the original, I'm assuming, to the car has a bunch of like scratches in it from it being like 50 some years old so um yeah but you know I was uh pretty distraught I took a couple of days off to even before I even touched the car <laughs> that's you know like I said I don't know how many man hours I have on this I care not to even add it up but I mean aside from what I said I mean uh 
when I first bought the car, the cam gear stripped, bent all the valves, so I rebuilt the heads, put new uh, timing chain in it, water pump, belts, alternator, hoses, uh, wiper motor, I redid all the suspension, I, uh, control arms, uh, headers, uh, exhaust, I'm sure I'm missing like 20 things, like I did a lot of stuff to this car. But, uh, you know, I'm just grateful that it was saved. Uh, and it could have been much, much worse. If it would have let me sit anywhere else besides literally in the fire company parking lot, I probably would have burned to the ground. So we got to it in time. I'm grateful. It sucks because I got to put more money into this motor. I really didn't want to because it's going to eventually be yanked out for the 351. But famous saying, it's not about uh, miles per gallon or how much money you put in it. It's about you know, the smiles it gives you. So, you know, like I said, I make these channels to help out the beginner too. Uh, just don't cheap out. I, you know, usually pretty good at not cheaping out, but if I had the actual ones that you can tighten down, this probably would have never happened. Or if I wouldn't have used, well, I didn't use it. It's how it was set up. I mean, I bought the car, thought nothing of it. Um, metal line it would have completely stopped it from happening because from the gas tank up into the inner fender well it is a steel line and then there's a little bit of a rubber line right there and then it comes down into the fuel pump down there and then it's a metal line that comes up off the fuel pump to the carburetor and then there's a little bit of a break and then I had my fuel filter and then it went to the carburetor so I'm gonna eliminate that for peace of mind so uh, that's my two cents I don't think I'll ever deal with rubber line again <laughs> it's not worth it so that's an update video I am very happy with those seats I'm very happy with the suspension and the handling on the car um, so if you are looking to update your suspension I love QA1 uh, front shocks are amazing. I had to mess with the adjustments on the shock and the ride height a little bit Because uh, the long tube headers tend to hang a little lower uh, And I was dragging them at a lot of places. So I got that stuff straightened out. So that's pretty much the update video If you followed me along so far, I do my best to get back to your comments. I'm really horrible with that I should probably be better because you all invest your time in my videos. We'll do a winch video We may do a video on this guy and a water pump on my uh, Johnson uh, 88 special. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, just happy the car survived. Till next time. See you.